Hey guys, it's Troy with a pen mail video today. I didn't plan on putting out another one so soon, but um, today was pen mail day, and I got two packages, not just one. I was expecting one because tracking said one was coming today, and tracking said the next one would be showing up on Monday, but they both showed up today. So I figured, what the heck? Let's go ahead and get them out, let's play with them, let's ink them up, and or at least two of them. I did not ink up the vintage, so I got two vintage pens, and I got two modern pens. Um, I got the modern pens uh, from Terry over at Peyton Street Pens in California, and I got the vintage pens from Antique Digger, AntiqueDigger.com. Uh, and you know what? You know what I'm going to tell you. You can take 10% off all your purchases over at AntiqueDigger.com. Just use discount code TROY, T-R-O-Y. And a bunch of you have taken advantage of that particular uh, code. I thank you for that. It is good to try to keep him in business because it keeps me supplied and will hopefully keep you supplied. Um, but uh, it helps keep him you know, going and getting out pens to people. So anyway... Wanted to share these with you today. Um, let's go ahead and start with the two I'm not going to write with right now. Um, and that is only because I have not inked them up. These two, the vintage ones, I have not inked up. So, what did I get for vintage? Well, I got a Waterman 22 with a taper cap from the early 1900s. And also from the early 1900s is a Waterman 12 and a half, which is an eyedropper filler. And uh, the half in the watering, uh, Waterman numbering system represents that it's a, a thinner uh, pen. And I actually have a couple of number 12s. I got three number 12s in my collection, and I'll pull out at least one of them. And eh, what the heck, I'll take out at least two of them, and I'll keep them the, uh, the black hard rubber. I've got one that's a beautiful red modeled hard rubber as well, but I just left that in the drawer. So I've got two number 12s, and uh, in between is the 12 and a half. And if you like flexible nibs, generally, an old Waterman number 2 nib is going to be a fantastic flexi nib for you. And why do I mention that? Well, I've got a modern flex nib here on my desk that you just saw the box for. So anyway, uh, this is the, the size differential, so let me go ahead and take that off. Like I said, it's an eyedropper filler, so you would es essentially just unscrew this and drop the ink that you want down into that tube, um, and you would put it back and write with it. So I'll give you an example of the difference in the size between these two in both length and girth. All right, and looking at the nib, you essentially have number two nibs on them. So I like antique Watermans, um, and even if I don't really want to write with it a whole lot, I've got it in my collection. I'm going to show you right there. It does say 12 and a half. That was chalked out for you to be able to see at the tip. So I'm going to go ahead and close that up. And then I'm going to show you the number 22, which is a taper cap, and it is another old Waterman, same idea, eyedropper filler, and it is another very thin Waterman, and it is a 22, meaning it's going to have a number two nib. In the Waterman numbering system, the last digit represents the kind of nib, so a 22, and you would essentially unscrew that, put your ink in it, and be able to write with it. So I'm going to show you these two pens in this book right here. I've shown you this book a bunch of times, Waterman Past and Present, the first six decades, Max Davis and Gary Lehrer, and I was talking with Gary in person just this past weekend because he was at the Triangle Pen Show in Raleigh, North Carolina, and GoPens.com is his website. I've bought a lot from him over the years, but he co-authored this particular book. So let's go ahead and open her up, and let's look at some taper cap pens. Looking here, you can see that I've got uh, showing some 22 22s, a 22 chased, which ours that we have right here is not chased, it's actually smooth uh, for the most part. It is, a, it is a smooth hard rubber rather than a chased hard rubber, uh, but you can see it actually looks very similar. Slightly different uh, gold trim. Just a little different banding on it, 
but essentially it's the same concept. So that's the number 22 here. So let's go ahead and flip another page over here and we can look at some cone cap eyedropper pens but if you look down here you can see the 12 and a halfs. You see the 12 and a half came um, in, with and without clips on them and they were um, all, these were all considered model 12s all model 12 as as well 12 and a half and the time period that these typically came out was somewhere between 1898 and 19 1898 and 1928 is the uh, time period you generally would see some of these. So anyway, um, both of those out of that particular book thought I'd share with you some vintage. All right, now on to the modern patents. Got a little more information on these. I'll start with this one. This is one I thought about um, purchasing and adding to uh, previous orders. Uh, at Peyton Street Pens because it was only like an $18 pen. Matter of fact, I've got the uh, the invoice uh, sitting over here somewhere, and I think it was only about 18 bucks. There it is, right there. Um, and uh, yeah, 19. It was a $19 pen, so I just added it on to my order. It has a double broad steel nib, so it's a steel nib, gold plated. Um, and I've got the details for that actually right here. This particular pen actually um, has been in production up until recently, so I am told. Um, it is the 78G. 78G. Uh, it is a pilot. It was made up until recently. It's about five and a half inches long. It does have a squeeze converter, so if you're familiar with pilot metropolitans and how they come, uh, then you will be familiar with the bulb like um, the aerometric squeeze converter that comes with those so and I did fill it up um, it does take pilot cartridges they are proprietary and it's got a gold plated trim around it uh, let's see what else to tell you the double broad gold plated nib um, they've got great line variation you'll see that here in a minute and they're sort of like italic stub nibs uh, the double broad is somewhere around a 1.1 millimeter nib but I've been playing with it here since I got it and just to let you know I did ink it up with some Birmingham pens Point Park Fountain Turquoise which is an ink I've had uh, laying around here for a couple of years figured I'd go ahead and give that a shot since I'm getting a little low in the bottle I got about a third left I wanted to go ahead and try to use some of that up I got the teal color um, there were only two colors that they had left I went ahead and chose the teal uh, because you know I figured that wouldn't be a bad choice so I'm not going to do a full review but I will uh, get a chance to take take it out here and write with it here momentarily all right so let's go ahead and look at the other pen that I got here, this is one that I balked at for a long time. When it first came out, uh, a lot of people rushed to go buy them, the Conklin Duraflex. Um, all it is is a Conklin Duragraph with their Omniflex nib in them, which to me is like big whoop. Okay, so it's another attempt at making a flexible steel nib. So I never jumped at them. But when I saw that the price it was being offered at on their website at Peyton Street Pens, I said, all right, let me go see what the big hype is about, and let me see if it's really worth uh, the excitement, because some people love them, some people hate them. Uh, but essentially, this came out in 2020, and Yaffa Brands, they did actually do a uh, collector's edition box for them, Duragraph Elements fountain pen. It, uh, this is the water. You see it's got an Omniflex nib, the blue and the green trim or coloring, on, and it's called the water. Um, this particular one, it is a limited edition. There were 1,898 that were made. Why 1,898? Well, look right here. Conklin established 1,898. So they made 1,898 of these. Mine happens to be number 774 out of that series, and it is actually engraved into the pen itself. So, you get a your stereotypical Conklin box, very plain box, generic to Conklin, although it is Conklin branded, obviously, but they use this box on most of their pens. So you open it up, and that is what you've got. That is their element of water, water. and you open it up inside. It did not come with any cartridges. It takes a standard international cartridge, but you've got some paperwork that went along with it underneath that pillow. You pull off the pen from that pillow, set aside said box, and here's what we've got. 
All right, now I thought it was a fairly decent looking pen. Yeah, okay, I'm not a huge fan. I've got several Durographs and I haven't been real impressed with those because they were the older Conklin nibs that in my opinion sucked. Um, uh, they had some quality control issues with Yaffa with both Monteverde and Conklin. And lately, if you saw my last Conklin video that I did on the Coronet, uh, they got better nibs. My, I am told that they are manufactured by Yovo and it writes so much better than the older Conklin nibs that I've got. I don't know how well you can see it, but it, you do have the engraving right on there that you have the Duraflex limited edition. And again, number 0774 out of 1898. So very much along the same lines as the, uh, the Duragraph, uh, the shape of the pen, the trim on the pen, and you've got like a rose gold trim on it here, uh, typical Conklin uh, Duragraph clip on it. And you do have here another ring. And let's go ahead and uncap it. You pull it off. And here you've got the Duraflex nib, or the Omniflex, flex, excuse me, the Omniflex nib fitted into this, uh, a Duragraph, so they just call it the Duraflex. So it does say right on it, it's a flex nib, and you see it's got wings on it. I'll be honest, it almost looks more like a squid head <laughs> uh, than wings on it, but it is very different from any of their other nibs, and that is their flexible nib. But it is a cartridge converter, and it is a screw-in converter. Now that's one of the things they did on this that I do like. I like screw-in converters because it is so much better than using just a friction fit. They don't come out. That's what I like. All right, so we're threaded back in. Let's go ahead and put it back together. I'm not doing a full review here. I'm just going to, you know, show you the pen mail and how it looks. It's pretty long when it's posted. I probably would not use it posted. Uh, but let's go ahead and put nib to paper and see how the baby writes. All right, like I told you a few minutes ago, I am not going to write with these two. I don't feel like inking them up right now, quite honestly. Um, I don't feel like eyedroppering anything right now. I bought these mainly just to add to my collection, uh, not so much to write with. Number one, they're thin pens. I don't really love thin pens, but I did not have the 12 and a half nor the 22. So I just wanted to get those just so I can have them. And if I choose to play with them later, I will. But these are the two that uh, I did want to play with. So let's go ahead and see how it does. Let's start with a Conklin since I have it in my hand. The Conklin Duraflex. And this one is the Elements Water. Now, one of the neat things about it is you can see that it's it's actually pretty clear. You can see, you know, the converter come down through and you pull it off. You get the flex of, you know, green. And, and, and not so much coppery uh, color, but you can see a tint of green, tints of blue. So that is kind of neat. I mean, I, I did like how it was fairly translucent. So this is their Flex Nib. So it is the OmniFlex Nib. It is their attempt at a steel flexible nib. How well does it work? Let's give it a shot. Let's go ahead and start doing the, the swirlies that I like to do. I just like that, especially because some of the letters of my name um, end up doing that kind of motion. But let's go ahead and you can get some good line variation out of it. And you can get a good amount of ink laid down with it. You don't want to press too hard because you can spring the tines and I really don't feel like doing that. But there you go. Good wet line. Good amount of line variation if you want it. And like I said, I did put into this Birmingham pens. And this is the point. 
park, fountain, fountain, you know, with water, <laughs> and this is a turquoise. I mean, it's very springy. It's a good attempt. Um, you know, was it perfect? No. I mean, if you really want a wet noodle kind of thing, um, this is a, you know a fairly inexpensive by comparison uh, when you're looking at experimenting with different vintage pens. Like I showed you those number twelve uh, Watermans, fantastic line variation and spring and uh, uh, flexibility out of those. This is not a bad, I mean, uh, granted, another not completely successful attempt at a steel flexible nib is what was written on the description by Peyton Street Pens. And I gotta say, um, you know, it's better than I thought it was going to be. I had very low hopes or expectations out of this. Um, and they did a halfway decent job. I, I thought they did well in coming up with a steel Omniflex nib. So I've got no complaints about it or its performance, especially when I picked up this particular pen for like 45 bucks, I think. Uh, matter of fact, I got, once again, right here, and yep, $45. So this pen together with this pen got me over the free shipping amount. Um, like I said, this was an add-on pen. So let me show you how this one works. I will post this one because you know it's a little smaller and it is a very light pen. Not doing a full review, but you can see here that's a good wide nib on this thing. So I've already played with it some, so let's go ahead and try the Pilot 78G. Now, true to form, on a nib like this, on an italic stub, this actually, when you go horizontally, is going to give you a thin line. Do a vertical line. Look at the difference between those two. Fairly thin on the going horizontally, vertically, going up, not so much. On the downstroke, however, where you get. And you can get a little bit of line variation out of this thing just by pressing down a little further and get a little more ink flow. But just your normal down, very light. I'm doing this very lightly. Just barely letting that touch the page. You can see the difference between the horizontal and the vertical. So, I mean, what can I say? This is actually something that I would never normally buy. I'm not into italic stub nibs. I've got some Schaefer's with italic stubs, uh, the Schaefer No Nonsense that we've got around the house. And I, I'll be honest with you, I hate it. Uh, but I figured I would go ahead and give this one a try just so I can say that I've tried another one. Pilot, you know, I figured Pilot would probably do okay with it. Um, didn't know how good it was going to be. I can tell you this, I, I don't think I could use this as a daily writer. I can use it if I was going to do like signatures all day long, if I was doing a book signing. And you can see the huge difference. So I can see where a pen like this would work for calligraphy, uh, that kind of thing. But it's certainly not something I would want to use as a daily writer. I would take that uh, that Conklin Duraflex any day as a, as a daily writer. But, you know, as a novelty pen, this can be kind of fun if I'm looking for a way to have a little variation or if I have calligraphy and I'm going to use a, a pen for that purpose if I want to make something a little more fancy you know if I wanted to do something for a signature you know it's kind of a neat pen to use for those purposes a, a kind of a neat nib you know it's a steel nib I didn't expect a whole lot out of it I didn't expect a whole lot of a nineteen dollar nib uh, but that's a I mean that's a very interesting it's a double broad you can see right there it says BB so double broad by pilot hey just a <laughs> real quick edit and retraction here that I'm gonna stick into the video um, on the the Duraflex here I made a mistake I put this into it, the Carolina in my mind. Um, it is the Papier Plume. It was the official ink that, uh, that was released for the Triangle Pen Show. And I used that in the Duraflex. 
I used the Birmingham Pens Point Park Fountain Turquoise in the Pilot 78G. So, sorry about that. I <laughs> just wanted to let you all know that I got my inks wrong when I wrote it down. I just got it backwards. So anyway, guys, that's my pen mail for today. Four pens, two vintage, two modern. And, uh, you know, I'll be playing with these for a little while. When I feel up to it, I may uh, ink up uh, the vintage and maybe even give you a demonstration of the 12 and a half versus a 12, how they write. But if I do that, I really have to ink up the 12 as well. And I've got, you know, as for a while I had too few pens in, inked up. I only had a few of them. Um, well, now I've got too many again because I was kind of on a buying spree here recently, especially with a pen show and some others that I've had come in. And believe it or not, I've got some more pens coming in. What does that mean for you? Giveaway time. I've got a few that I'm going to be giving away. So just keep watching. Thanks for joining me for pen mail for today. Subscribe if you haven't. If you want a fountainpenfanatic.com t-shirt, go to the link below and get you one. Uh, I just ordered some more so I can have some to give away to a few people. Um, and I would really appreciate you helping me promote the channel. All of you guys, I've had a spate of people uh, from overseas who have been hitting me up as friends on Facebook. And you've got a bunch of mutual pen friends. If every one of you just went ahead and subscribed to this channel, I mean, I'd add a couple hundred new subscribers like overnight. So please do subscribe to my channel. Um, visit my uh, sponsors. I say sponsors, but people that I'm helping promote, uh, discount codes. Um, and if you want, like I said, the t-shirt, you want to support the channel, there are links to do that all down below. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And we'll be back with more pen mail some other day.